Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and these right here are all Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem artichokes are a really great food crop. They're kind of like potatoes nutritionally. Uh, they grow a tuber that's down in the ground. And one of the other great things about them, in addition to the fact that you can get an enormous amount of food in a small amount of acreage, in fact, this has got to be like one of the top crops in terms of how much food you can get you know, given a certain amount of uh, you know, uh, land that you have devoted for, uh, for growing crops. One of the nice things about them is that nobody would look at these things and think, oh, that's a food crop. They get these little yellow flowers at the top of it. I think most people would kind of think of them as being an ornamental. Uh, and that's something that comes up a lot in, uh, you know, prepping videos and, uh, you know, prepping topics. There are people talking about in a, you know, post-SHTF situation where, you know, maybe your neighbors are roving around looking for food because they hadn't, you know, planned ahead. Uh, you know, you don't want people pillaging your garden. And this is a crop that if people saw it, they wouldn't really think that it was a crop. You can leave the tubers in the ground, and uh, if you leave them, you know, right into net the following spring, they'll shoot up and they'll grow into another plant. And if you, uh, you know, just leave them there over the winter, you can dig them up during the winter. It's just, it's a really great versatile crop. And it has that kind of benefit, like I said, of not being super conspicuous if people are walking around uh, looking for, for food to now. And uh, th that brings me to the topic of today's video, which is uh, you know, that idea that people need to be really covert when it comes to, uh, you, know, you know, prepping and preparing. You can see my house over there. It's got a bunch of solar panels. On the roof of it, there's a, a chimney coming out the top. And oftentimes, here on my channel, uh, I'll get comments from people uh, saying, you know, I, I, I'm going to be up Schitt's Creek, uh, you know, if there's ever a disaster situation because, you know, my situation is just so conspicuous. The solar panels on the roof, the wood stove going out the top of it, the gardens out in the front. And uh, the idea is, is that really sets me apart from other people and I'm going to be like a beacon uh, that, uh, you know, people are going to be drawn to. And I can understand why people would think that, and as is the case with many things in, in life, oftentimes when people think that they're critiquing someone else, they're really making a statement about themselves. And there are a lot of people in this world that just don't realize that there are entire communities of people that live like this, where this is not something conspicuous, this is not a beacon, this is just like, you know, one in the many houses that, you know, people are seeing when they go down the road it's like you know the uh you know, if you were to have like a like a three a, a triple decker apartment uh or something like that something that's very common to see in like cities and the outskirts if you were to have that in an area like this that would be uh the the kind of sore thumb uh, the sore thumb that would be the thing that that sticks out and uh, not that people would be drawn to that necessarily uh but uh, that would be the thing that would be unusual. And I think a lot of people, when they are making uh, assumptions about the world around them that I, I, I guess apparently they haven't really visited very much themselves, they think that because something is different than what they're used to, that it is somehow outside the norm or it somehow is uh, you know, unusual and would really stick out. And that's not really the case. It, there are communities out here, if you care to you know, come out and join us, where the idea of having a pantry is kind of the norm, where the idea of having a garden is kind of the norm, where the idea of having solar panels on your roof and a, uh, a wood stove chimney coming out of your roof, that is kind of the norm. And I think so many people uh, just get, um, they marinate in these kind of city and suburban environments that they don't realize that, you know, there are a lot of people that are living a way of life that I think a lot of people think is, um, fantasy or uh you know is something that is like uh you know it's a really niche thing that it's just for like some weirdo preppers uh, and and nobody else really adopts this way of life now not everybody in this area is a prepper and i and i i say that because i kind of assume that because you know i don't go around talking about being a prepper with people uh in the area it seems kind of imprudent to go around talking about things like that uh and beyond that it really doesn't it doesn't matter what your label is. Here on my channel, you, you've heard me say it a million times uh, before, the idea of uh, labels, like this person's a prepper, this person's not a prepper, is just a way of re separating us for re from reality and separating us from each other. What's, not, what's important isn't what your label is, what's important is what you do. Uh, I'm somebody who has a garden. There's other people on this uh, street that have gardens. I'm somebody that had solar panels. There are other people on this street that have solar panels. 
ditto for um, you know wood stoves and pantries and all those kind of things. You know, it doesn't really matter whether we're preppers or not. What matters is what kind of activities we're engaged in because it's not the label that saves you in an uh, emergency situation. It is the activities, it is the assets, it's the familiarity with uh, you know problem solving and all of that. So uh, I wanted to put that out there uh, to you know to many of you guys who you know critique myself and other people uh, on you know on YouTube about uh, you know living in a way that just makes us a um, uh, like a magnet for people in a post SHTF uh, SHTF situation. Not everybody in the world lives like you. Not everybody in the world is the kind of person that is instantly going to start roving the landscape, uh, you know, looking for you know some garden to pillage. And uh, because of that, uh, there are communities that you can live in where this is kind of the norm. This is the gray man. And I think it's important to keep that in mind because uh, this type of lifestyle, this isn't some kind of a fantasy that, uh, you know, a couple crazy preppers, you know, adopt into their lifestyle. There are entire communities, like I said, where people live like this. People have pantries, people have gardens. You don't really have to hide your plants. You don't have to hide your solar panels. You don't have to hide your wood stove and your, your firewood and your tools and everything like that because all of your neighbors have that kind of thing. And communities like this are key in a real SHTF situation because I, I know there's this like lone wolf kind of idea where you know, you're, you're uh, taking care of all your preps and it's like you against the world. Uh, but that's not the way humans uh, live and uh, thrive and survive in, in this world. I don't know if you noticed, we don't have claws, we don't have fangs, we don't have thick coats. What we have is brains and the ability to network our brain to other people's brains to, uh, you know, to maximize our ability to cooperate, to share, to collaborate. That's the human superpower. Not, we're not super muscular. We don't have those sharp teeth. We don't have those sharp claws. It's our, our ability to coordinate with each other. And the prepper prepper, I'm going to put quotes around that, the prepper that neglects uh, to consider that idea that our greatest asset is each other is the prepper that isn't probably going to last very long. There's a lot of wonderful communities out here. You can come out and you can join us and you'll realize that this kind of sore thumb stuff, it's, it's the norm. This is the gray man. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, here's another video that you might enjoy. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen. They help to support the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list, the link's below.